I like to start off with a little bit of humor. If you're a software vendor, you might understand this one, uh, free EMR. If you're not paying for it, then you're not the customer. You're the product that's being sold. That would be a concept is if your medical records are on something that is you're not open to or you're not paying for, ultimately, you're the one that's being the product that's being sold. So to kind of summarize here, I've, from our industry, we only have five problems in terms of health care. And these are the only five problems that we ever have. So I would like to believe, I would like to say that patients are not accountable for health because they do not have access to their medical records. That's the number one problem for our doctors. Number two problems is patients are not managing their, their conditions because of a lack of understanding of disease or the treatment plans. They're told to take these medications. They're told that they should exercise. We're all told the same things over and over again, yet none of us really understand what the effect of it is. Effect of it is. Uh, number three is payers are paying for duplicate tests and duplicate lab work. This is where the cost comes into play. This is where it becomes extremely expensive for the payer, for the patient, and for the system. Number four, patients are being sent to hospitals because of drug allergies or drug-to-drug -drug related uh, um, in interactions. This is a simple basis system that can essentially process the information real time to alert the clinicians. Um, if you're cl a lot of the times your clinician doesn't know what medication you're, you're on or what medication you, he's prescribing, he or she is prescribing to you. Number five is healthcare is too expensive because it's only used when you're sick. And so what we've done is we kind of sat back and we thought about the different models of the healthcare system. And we kind of thought, you know, what is the current model that we have? It's a reactive based model. You get sick, you fall ill, you then go to the doctor's office. You, um, it's essentially, you need to go to the doctor's office, so then you go. You have the flu, you then go to the doctor's office. Uh, a new way of healthcare is gonna be preventing the patient from ever becoming sick. I mean, that'd be a great thought process. Uh, the second model would be to be a preventative-based system. So preventative screenings, making sure the patients follow up with their visits, making sure the doctor or the, your primary care physician ensures that you come in, make sure that your lab work is done in a timely manner, make sure that medications are taken in a timely manner. It's funny because your dentist sends you a card every six months. Uh, very rarely do I get a, call, a card or a call from my primary care provider. The second one is a proactive manner. This is where a patient is alerted of high risk. You know, if a patient has high risk of a disease, a potential illness, a potential disease, something that's coming about in the area, this is where you're proactive. A key indicator of this one is during the H1N1 breakout. We didn't know it, where, where the disease was until a, a news broke out within the area. But imagine being able to be notified by your primary care provider that there is a patient that's come in by your area who's been reported of this illness. And the fourth part is the predictive medicine. A lot of medical illnesses could be preventative because we know our genetics ahead of time. Your genes, your family genes, your mother and your fathers, your grandfathers, your grandparents essentially map out your gene pool, which will essentially be able to dictate a lot of what your life, a lot of what your diseases that you can happen. So genetics and also your environment play a key role in predictive medicine. Uh, the key concept right here is the bullseye approach. You'll see the patient is the center of the of the target, uh, the physician is on the outskirts, and the ancillary services is on the outskirts of that. Along with the new direction of healthcare where the patient is the center, all the ancillary services will be associated with that patient. That means that the patient has more control of their records, they can check, pass the records along to all of their external communications, all of their ancillary services. Imagine being able to have your your uh, imaging department speak with your specialist who also knows what your pharmacy is working with, your health plan provider knows what each of these are, uh, what process uh, lab work is being done, and your uh, essentially your health maintenance specialist will make sure that all your providers are ensuring all the screenings and tests are being done in a timely manner. Uh, we have some five stages of healthcare. Some of them are a basis of uh, independent care. Some of the independent care would be 
um, uh, individuals can, or separate organizations provide much of the care right now. We're then going to be migrating towards a connected care model where individuals and organizations are going to become sharing information that is patient information on basic collaboration. collaboration. Uh, the third care is going to be a co coordinated care. This is where patient data is then passed through multiple organizations and create a, uh, essentially a health plan, a health plat roadmap for each patient. Keeping the patients away from chronic illnesses, high diseases, potential diseases that can happen. Number four would be an integrated care model. This is where all of the organizations share data now between. This is the, the pharmacies. This is the pharmacy reporting back to the primary care physician that the patient picked up the medication at that time. This is the patient notifying the primary care and the hospital, or, or the, uh, the, pri the, the patient notifying the primary care or the insurer that they're taking the medications correctly. This is the uh, health plan payer saying that we've got a lab, we got a test results for this patient and let me send this to the primary care doctor right away. And then the fifth model is an accountable care. Accountable care is taking the liability from the patient's hands and moving it towards, or taking it from the doctor's hands and then moving it towards the patient. So ultimately the patient is gonna become more accountable for their health and their well-being, rather than depending on just the doctor. Um, a little bit of statistics, 85% um, of Americans uh, carry a cell phone. 45% of those cell phones are a smartphone. Uh, 65 of Americans have a computer within their house. Uh, telemedicine, you can manage it from a remote facility or any other remote kind of location that you need to. Uh, whether there's an internet connection or not, telemedicine is being practiced right now across the board. It's not only through a telephone wire, as long as you have an internet connection, you're using telemedicine. And then the fourth component is gonna be remote monitoring devices. These are, this is interesting because now you have the devices that the patients are utilizing talking back to uh, systems, notifying what the systems of when patients have taken certain things. And one of the projects that we're working on is um, AT&T has a, uh, a smart pill device that would essentially alert, uh, notify the cap of when the, uh, when the medication is due for taking. Uh, we also have health maintenance models. This is where we have consumer devices that patients will be able to follow along with health maintenance. Um, smartphones, iPads, we also need more uh, efficiency studies, P, uh, uh, essentially physician's desk reference. We work with uh, physician's desk reference in um, the clinicians reporting adverse effects to patients that are taking medication. So if a physician wants to change a patient medication from a current model to a different medication, they, because the patient has adverse effects, they, they could report this to physician's desk reference who would then report it to the FDA and they then go down the chain to create studies. We also have health and wellness monitor, monitoring, preventative screenings, chronic condition awareness and prevention, and we have patient-centered medical homes. So where we think that the new medical direction of medicine is gonna be really happening is going through uh, HMO models. This is a group savings kind of, uh, kind of uh, opportunity. We then have accountable care organizations, which is a shared savings organization. The real difference between the two is in an HMO model, um, the government goes through a health plan or a health insurer. With an accountable care organization, they're going through physicians, uh, IPAs, or directly to the physician groups to manage it accordingly. Then they'll share the, the cost savings. We then also have patient-centered medical homes. This is essentially a uh, comprehensive primary care setting that allows facilities continuous relationships between patients. Uh, sometimes this is an extended stay facilities. This is a, um, a extended living facilities that were allow patients to uh, manage their health and have uh, healthcare providers on site. And then you have telemedicine that will plug in right there that re that essentially remotely monitors all patients. So you can have a virtual office visit from your home. Why go into the doctor's office with all the sick patients when you could just do a, a prescription refill from the comfort of your house? We then have some healthcare solutions. Uh, care, uh, care goes from the doctor's office to always connected and always monitoring. 
Imagine being able having an iPhone app where you could upload your uh, that you took your medications, or you could do a blood glucose check from your uh, from from the restroom over here. You could report that all your blood sugars and everything is in order. You could report back to your care provider plan that you've been taking your medication. This will ultimately lead to a lesser liability for the doctors because well, essentially they know that the patients are now compliant. A lot of times physicians have an issue out there in terms of compliance. They don't know if the patients are doing what the physicians are, are, are uh, instructing them to do. Patients also have, will have access to medical charts, labs, and diagnostic imaging. You can go openly to other providers, to other clinicians, to other caregivers. You can even get an advice from a friend, a family friend that's a doctor, to get a second opinion. This is no longer being uh, your doctor having the, the, your chart being held hostage. It allows you to can manage your chart a lot more effective, effectively. Uh, then we have payers giving billing transparency to providers. Essentially, your insurance plan knows what the specialist has seen, what procedures were done, and what diagnosis codes they, that were given. This is all on the super. This is all on the billing code. So why can't they make this more readily available so that your primary care provider can pull that information back down? So that if they know that your cardiologist has given congenitive heart failure, they would be able to read that note and then see the treatment plan therefrom. So it's a lot of transparency between payer and providers. And then we have a preventative health is affordable for everyone. If they keep you outside of the hospital, they don't have to worry about the hospital costs or the extreme measures of the hospital. So essentially keeping the, healthy, the patient healthy will keep the, pa will keep the costs under control. Uh, what we do, we, uh, we integrate with the HIEs. Within our, co uh, within our company, we work with a lot of the health information exchanges out there. We feel that we need to be a transparency, and we hope that this is a, uh, a medium that will work with everybody. Um, as we were discussing at our table is right now a peer-to-peer -peer kind of communication is the best communication because we still don't know how these HIEs are set up or what standard or protocol they're following. So if you had a peer-to-peer -peer kind of system that can talk and communicate with each other, you're better off. What we're noticing is that a lot of the systems out there, um, some of our competitors have their own systems, and it's hard to transport medical records from one facility to the other facility, even though both facilities are using the same system. So that's kind of a little bit um, outrageous in our, in our eyes to, of, you know, if you're on the same system, why can't you exchange patient data back and forth? And with a standard information exchange, you can interoperate with legacy systems. They should be able to import and get the information back down from other systems that they have available. Um, a health information exchange, what its ideal is to provide is essentially that big ring in the center, linking all of the departments, all the community centers, all of the pharmacies, all of the payers all together in a transparent model that essentially is better for the patient and provides a wider spread healthcare for the patient. Um, a little bit about First Medical Solutions before I get into the sales pitch is we started off as a medical transcription company. Uh, we've been a very aware of patient records, patient charting since the mid 90s. We've, um, we've been one of the pioneers of getting the 12 hour turnaround time of transcription services and bringing it back downtown. And we've serviced about seven and a half to 7,000 physicians nationwide. Uh, we grew to, uh, in about 2005, we started realizing that doctors wanted a smarter method of charting. They needed a better system. So we kind of set out and see what systems were available. What we've noticed is that systems were uh, overly complicated. It's really simple that these, these EMR systems do not need to be overly compl uh, complicated for doctor's offices. The end user is a doctor who uh, doesn't want to spend too much time behind the keyboard or the mouse. What they really want to do is focus on patient care, and they want to document as quickly as possible. So w within our system, we, our system was designed by doctors, and it was actually developed by engineers. Some of the partners that we work with, um, here's just a brief list of who we, uh, what projects we work with and some of the partners that we do work with and integrators that we have. We um, work with Interactive Solutions Group on some of our telemedicine components. We work with Midmark and Welch Allen and JedMed for the scoping capabilities. Uh, we have some projects with AT&T, Dell, Quest, HP, so on and so forth. 
Um, one of the products that we want to, that we're right now piloting is a, essentially a patient health card. It's a little smart chip built into the card with the patient's picture, their name, emergency contact, and insurance information on the card. This is essentially a quick swipe to any healthcare. All the patient's data or essentially medical record will be stored on the card in a secure manner. But also we're creating a network of where you swipe the card, it's automatically gonna know to speak to our network, pass all the authentic, uh, authentication purposes, and then you, essentially your doctor will be able to pull down your medical records from an HIE or from a centralized location. Uh, we also have uh, the illness control. This is the patient portal where a patient can do a little bit more than just WebMD, but they can manage their health record. We noticed that early part of this year, Google has pulled out of their uh, Google Health or uh, their, Google, their, their solution. They've migrated towards uh, Microsoft's solution. That's not because a, it's not because of a lack of, uh, a lack of solution, but it was a lack of traction that they were getting. They, uh, it was actually forcing patients to put their medical records on their system. So within our system, one of the problems that we're looking to solve is the built-in management for obesity, diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, and depression. We want to essentially, within our patient portal, we want to control the high-level problems that are occurring in, 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 in our communities so that once we provide a solution, we can then provide a solution for multiple diseases there on down. Um, and what we do do with our uh, interfacing with devices, part of our telemedicine component is we use a, um, AT&T has a medication bottle with an indicator. Uh, we also work with Interactive Solutions Group who uses Cisco and Polycom devices so that the doctors can do a video conferencing on one screen and a chart management with the patient right there on the other screen. We're really seeing telemedicine pick up extremely in the behavioral health kind of components of it, but we're also seeing cardiologists, we're seeing neuro, 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 neurologists utilize, utilizing these systems. We see uh, primary carers utilizing the system also. Um, we have Quest Labs, CM Labs, and Meridian Labs. Uh, the last two labs are South Florida specific but we're working on a pilot program there so that any patient that goes to the doctor's office, essentially the lab work will be channeled through the patient and then to their primary care. So uh, the patient now has, has access to their chart. Um, this is a little pilot program that we're working with a handful of doctors on this so that we can see how it's gonna work as if we put the patient, the charting back into the patient's hand. And the Welch Allen, Midmark, and GenMed solutions. These are essentially USB Bluetooth devices that integrate right into our EMR system. Um, and so what I'd like to do is just wrap it up. I know I, I wanted to keep it short and sweet. Uh, if anybody has any questions for me, please feel free to ask me now. Or if you'd like, you could ask me after.